Welcome to Code Rush Feature of the Week. What have we got this week, Mark? I'm going to show you some of my favorite templates. These are Code Rush templates that are hard to categorize into one particular group. And even if you were to do that, you wouldn't get a whole lot of templates in that group. So it wouldn't really make sense to just talk about a few. Sure. Um, but what they do have in common is these are templates that I use all the time in my coding and they save a lot of time uh, and that's why I want to share them. So Excellent. these are okay. my favorite templates. So Good stuff. we'll start right up here inside of uh, this method here called get age. And uh, you notice I'm passing in a person. I might want to check to see if that person is null or not. I can just type in, I come in here and I type in INR after copying that to the clipboard and it gives yep. me this bit right here. And I can just come in here and specify what I want the return piece to be. But it's a very quick way to get out of there, um, out of so there. So INR is if null return. Right, if null return. You've also got IN, mnemonic there. INX as well. Um, and you can do the same thing with INX as well. You can specify sure. what that is. I guess that's if null exit then. Right, exactly. If null exit or if null return, however you want to think about it, there are two templates there that do the mm. same thing. Cool. There's already a coder's feature called add contract that'll also do that. So if you don't want to use templates, you can come in there and use that feature and you can use get essentially the same code if you're dealing with uh, a parameter. But let's say you're not. Let's say we're coming here. We've got like maybe first name. Uh, we're going to use, I'm just going to use uh, declare local to bring this up here onto the clipboard. Let's say we've got first name on the clipboard now and we want to make sure that's not, that's a valid value. I can just come in here, type in INR and space very quickly. Nice. And hit enter, or come down, and I can make whatever. So you might say that the templates are, are a little bit um, more flexible almost, because whereas the particular contract, that refactoring, or sorry, the code contract generation there, will target things that are parameters of the current method, uh, you can use the template with anything you can put on the clipboard that is referenceable. Right. Let me come, I'm just going to cut this to the clipboard. I'm going to get rid of this line of code right here. Let's say I'm inside the method and I want to return a value. Another mm -hmm. favorite template of mine is R for smart return and just hit R yep. and then the space bar or the tab key, and it'll give you some kind of suggestion, something in scope. It's a field. Mm -hmm. Notice the orange rectangle around it. Yep. So I can just uh, hit enter on it and get to the end of the line if I want, or if I were to do that again, I can paste and then hit enter to get out. <laughs> or I can do something else. I can say return, I can work with whatever I want to do. Here, let's one more time. Return and I might type in like person, for example, dot, and I might grab something along the lines from here. Work with it for a while, type in that piece that you saw me have before, whatever that's going to be, and then hit enter when I'm done and I'm outside the end. I don't have to hit the semicolon. I'm at the end of the line. Nice. So aside from anything else, these templates will get you where you want to be after you've put the relevant content in place. Yes, exactly. All right. So um, that's R for return. Um, now let's say I want to do some work inside of here for a while. Like maybe uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut that to the clipboard again. Let's say I want to do some work and, and I'm not, for example, in this method, between the declaration of the result and the returning of the result. I sure. can I can get to that, I can set that framework up by typing in RI for result instance. RI gives me result instance. And it figures out what the return type of the method is, declares the result of that type. You can see to the left here, I've got sure. int as my type because the method returns int. And so I can just nice. say, there's my result. And then I can come down in here and I can maybe do something along these lines here where I can say, well, maybe result, we start by saying result is equal to um, date time now minus uh, the person's birthday. Uh -huh. Speaking of uh, date time now, let's just copy person.birthday on the clipboard. This wasn't in my list, but DTN, <laughs> oops, sorry, DTN, date time now. Oh, very nice. Okay. So we can do something like this. Yeah. All right. So uh, we could say result is equal to that, and oh, we've, we're running into problems already because of what it is. But the idea is we could, we could, let's do this instead. Declare local. There's our time span, and then yep. come down in here, and we'll say that's our time span divided by um, that piece right there. So we can say result is equal to that. Sure. Okay. I really like that. I mean, the, the result uh, instance is, is very like a using because uh, you, you get your preparatory phase, you've got your final phase, which are both pretty much boilerplate for what you're doing. Okay, so this, this circumstance of setup and then finishing is the same, but then positions you in the middle, ready to do your work. Yep. So you're just set up, ready to go. It's more boilerplate that you don't have to think about code rush handling for you. Yeah, and notice it puts this little marker right here, this little blue, light blue marker right in there. If I were to type yep. on that line, that goes away, no big deal. But if I were to come in here, I use the RI template like this, I'm here, I can just hit escape to get inside there and start working. Or yep. 
Alternatively, if I type in RI, I can just hit the right, I can hit enter the right arrow key to get over here. Maybe I want to initialize it to something, for example. Yeah. Um, here's another one that's not on my list that I use all the time, s.e for string.empty. Sure, yeah. Okay. So, so we're preserving all the options. Basically, if you want to just work with a bullet, sorry, a, a boilerplate variable that's called result, which is very common when you're having a function, you can do that. If you want to rename it to something more meaningful, you can do that. And if you want to initialize it, you can do that. We haven't taken any of the options away, and we've shortened the whole process for you. Now let's go down here and look at this class called group. I'm going to take away the initialization on members. I'm going to copy members to the clipboard. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to use this template, n-i-n-s-t, for new instance. This is probably okay. one of the longest templates that doesn't use dynamic lists um, sure. that we have. It's like one of the only ones. But it stands for new instance. And I've got members on the clipboard. So I'm just going to type in inst and hit the space bar or the tab key. And notice what it does. It sees That's what very the, clever. It sees what the type <laughs> is. It gives me that declaration, and I'm essentially done there. Right? Really yeah. nice way to initialize anything that's on the clipboard. So, I mean, let's look at that. There's a lot of um, syntax in what you've. What I should say, there is a lot of ceremony to what has been put there for you. You've got angle brackets. You've got right. a semicolon. You've Actually, got the, hold sorry, on. the new and the braces. Hold on, one. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, Roy, but one. Look, here's the before. The before is I'm hitting all letter keys. No all letter shift, keys. No shift. What Rory's talking about are shift keys, right? Indeed. Things, the characters that I require the shift key to be held down to get. Those are expensive, hard, difficult characters to hit when you're coding. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to do that. I just hit the space bar, and here I am right in here. And I can pass a parameter to that or get out to the end, outside of it. And so, of course, there's another benefit to that and all of these templates in that these work for both Visual Basic and C sharp. So if you're switching languages and you maybe get a little confused sometimes with the syntax, it doesn't really matter because if you're using the templates, it will generate the correct syntax for you. That's right. All right. Let's talk about um, loops and and if statements. And one of the most common templates that you get essentially for free in CodeRush is the if template. If I type yeah. in if and the space bar, I get the parens right there automatically yeah. built in and I don't have to do anything else in there. And you get that for free if your template expansion is the space bar. So, um, uh, so that's the NIF statement. Uh, I might want to, I'll just type in T and hit the space bar to get true. Come down here. Here's another one that I did not put on the list. I totally should have done it, but I use it all the time. Letter B for braces. In C sharp, this is super powerful. Okay? Yeah. So B in a space, so much faster and easier to type than the, the other. Come down in here, hit L for space to get an else. Come down here, a B space to get the braces. I can also type in LB if I want, if I know I'm going to do an else and a brace right in there. Notice, Good stuff. Notice the blue markers in both places. I can just hit escape to jump to that spot if I want to, to get right in there um, uh, and come back. So that's that's also, also useful in this kind of a scenario where I'm like, I need braces. Oh, I want to go copy some code or I want to look somewhere else. I go look, I do it, I come back, and then I can paste that piece in, whatever it is. That's nice. Okay. All right, looping. So first, let's create a new generic uh, list of persons. So I'm going to copy persons to the uh, to the clipboard, and uh, let's actually make it more interesting. Let's make it a queue. So I'm going to say I want a new queue of what's on the clipboard. And we talked about this in the um, generic templates video. Take a look we at that did. if you're seeing this for the first time. So there's my queue right there. Of uh, we'll call this people, like that. That's what we'll call this. And yep. now let's say we want to loop through all those people. So I have it on the clipboard, right? There's people on the clipboard. I'm going to type in FE, and FE stands for for each. Yeah. And check it out. For each person in people. <laughs> okay? That's good, isn't that? It's not bad. That's, that's really nice. I mean, I mean, I use this all the time. I only ever now think when I'm using collections of the name, just naming that collection correctly. Um, Obviously, you know, if you've got the type, which is in this case person, you've got the singular there. Codrush can pick yeah. up on all of that and names everything exactly the way it should be. Yeah, that's There's the no having to worry about the syntax, no having to worry about picking the right name for something. It's just there and works. Yeah, I'm sorry. Maybe I maybe that happened too quickly. Watch this, right? FE space and I'm done. It works with what's on the clipboard. So as a result, let me, I'm going to drop a marker here. I'll, we'll show you more about markers later. But as a result, that copying, that one click copying, uh, Codrush smart copy, that's a nice feature to use with this. Just put the yep. carrot on the identifier you want, 
hit the copy key and it'll get it. I'm going off so to rails. Be clear, Mark has not highlighted anything there. He didn't go to the start and go control right. right and try and grab the hold of the word. Code Rush has worked out. I know I'm going to extend left. I'm going to extend right. I'm going to find the sensible thing to copy here. So there was no selection, just copy. And the right thing is on the clipboard. I'm going off rails, Rory. Watch this. <laughs> copy right here. Boom. There you go. Copy right here. Boom. Cut works the same way. Copy or cut. See that? So I'm not selecting anything. close attention. Absolutely. Mark is just positioning the carrot and Code Rush is figuring out the most sensible thing to copy. Yeah. Just so, like that. So let's do this. Let's say something like this. So let's say if birthday equals a DTN, like that, if it happens to be the same, or maybe if it's, let's do this, if it's greater than daytime now, then we've got kind of a problem. Sometimes when you're in a loop, you want a break, right? Sure. BR gives you a break. Just space bar right there and the Code Rush template will fire. Nice. Okay. CO will give you continue. So CO, yep. space bar, gives you continue, just like that. And, and this is great because these are the natural starts of these phrases anyway. You don't need to memorize these at all. You, you pretty much just type the first two letters and hit space. It's almost like letting IntelliSense complete for you, only IntelliSense isn't that clever and we are. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> we are more clever. Ha ha. <laughs> all right, so check this out. But let's say we only wanted to do this if people was not null. Maybe we wanted to add that check. So I'm going to type in if. That's one of the templates we showed you. Space gives me the parens. Now I'm going to type in NN for not null. I have people on the clipboard. Okay. Nice. And so that's how it gave it to me right there. So if not null, I can also do SN for is it set to null to, as a tab yeah. check. Right. And then we might do like for here, for example, return. And there's smart return suggesting string.empty. Fine. I'll take it. I hit enter. Okay. But if I didn't want string.empty, for example, and I wanted null, I could type in N for null and space bar. Right. Yep. T for true doesn't make sense in this method. F for false, right there. Sure. Okay. The last ones that I'm going to show you. Um, here, let's go back to where we were here that we liked the string dot empty. I'll just do the template again so you can see it. S dot e. Okay. Um, when I think I've even got an R S dot e. So do I have that R S e? There it is, right there. Return string nice. empty. That's also that's an older template, but it's in there. And you've got also related to that, you've got R0 for if you're in a me method that returns an int. So I can mm -hmm. come down in here and I can type in R0 like that. Let's see here. Hold on a second. I said, oh, yeah, the last ones I wanted to show have to do with um, modifiers for a member. Um, one of the okay. modifiers is V for virtual. So if I'm here up in the declaration area, I type in V space, I'll get virtual. If I type mm -hmm. in ST space, I'll get static. If I type in OV space, I will get override. Okay. So all yep. of those are there um, that are there for you. Uh, now, we've shown in the past, if you hold down the alt key and go up and down arrow, we can cycle through visibility. But there are also templates for visibility pieces that are common. So PUB is public sure. and PV is private. Like so a good example of that is um, when you introduce a new method, some people like to have their settings so that they go with the implied uh, scope. So I think I believe that's private in the case of um, right. Right like C Sharp. This. I'm not sure. Exactly. Yes. And, and as a result, you don't get that by default when you have your settings like that. But of course, now you can go in and qualify it using one of these templates to quickly expand the particular type of um, visibility that you want. Yeah. So I've just created a new class called dad. It descends from a person. Let's go up in here. We'll create a, we've got a protected method. Let's make it virtual. So I'll just use the B space like there. There's greet. Now we want to override it down here. I'm going to type in PTOV for protected override. And now I hit the space bar. And now Visual Studio kicks in and says, here, let me help you. Nice. Right? It's that fast, that quick. So we're giving a little step up there to help to provide you the point where Studio, or sorry, IntelliSense can then take over and help out even further. Yeah. So working nicely together. So that's it. Those are some of my favorite templates. To learn, to learn more about templates, see some of the other videos we've made in the, Coach, in the, in the Code Rush Feature of the Week uh, playlist series. We've got M for methods, E for enum, P for properties, T for tests. Uh, some real power there in terms of being able to write code quickly, efficiently, and with a very low cognitive load. Excellent stuff. Well, thank you very much. That's Mark Miller giving us even more tips on how to get the most out of our coding session. Uh, we'll see you on Feature of the Week next week then. All right. For more Feature of the Week videos, click one of the two video links on screen or select from our playlist. Download and learn more about Code Rush from the DevExpress website. And be sure to subscribe to our channel to receive all the latest Code Rush feature videos. 
Thanks for watching. See you next time.